Okay, so let's continue and actually finish off our renaming tool. Um, and to do that, let's create some objects to rename. So I'm going to call this cube and cube one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I think that's going to be good. We'll stick with the even number. All right. So um, just to make this a little more official, let's go and uh, move these guys all around. Not that you have to, but um, it'll just make it look more official. <laughs> okay. And there we go. That's good. All right. So with that out of the way, uh, let's jump back into the code and let's get a few things going here. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio and go back to the editor script. And what I want to do is I want to fire off a custom function or method right here. So we don't need that debug log anymore. And I'm going to call this method rename objects like so. Perfect. And so we can just copy that and we can come down here to this custom method region. We'll say void rename objects, turn it into a method like so. And inside of this method, what I want to do is I want to actually um, log to the console all the names of the objects I currently have selected. So remember, we are getting all those objects from this particular um, array from the selection class. And it's being stored inside of this selected variable, which is also an array. So what we can do is we can come down here and we can do a for loop, you know, so we can say for int i is equal to zero and i is less than the, the length of selected. So selected dot length, like so. All right. And I don't need the, there we go. And what we need to do is say i plus plus. So we want to iterate. We want to increase the value of i from zero to how many ever objects we have selected. And we do that by incrementing it. All right. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a debug.log and we're going to say selected and we use the square brackets and insert that i indexer. All right. So that's the, the current value. So it's going to start at zero and every single time we loop, it's going to add one to it because we did the plus plus here. So we're going to say, you know, whatever the name is at the current index. Cool. So let's try this out. So I'm going to jump back into Unity now. We'll let it compile. And once it's finished, we will go and select all these cubes here. So let's go and select all these cubes and I'm going to clear my console and then hit uh, rename selected objects. All right. So what you can see is that we're getting cube three, cube eight, cube six, four, two, cube and cube five, seven and one. Well, that's not very useful. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually organize that so that it lists it in order here, uh, even if you select it with a control and shift, it still gives us that randomized order, which I've always found quite odd, but there's a way around this. So what we can do, all right, and this is going to be a little bit uh, more of the advanced side, uh, but I want to show you anyway. So um, what I want to do is I want to do an array sort. All right. Um, if we were to go up to Google up here and look for array, dot sort uh, let's actually do C sharp like so there we go so ray dot sort uh, this is the method that we want to use because what we can do with it is we can actually put in what they call an I comparer <laughs> all right so uh, we're actually going to use a delegate version because um, we want to order it by its name okay so to do that, we're going to come back into Visual Studio here. And what I can, what I need to do, actually, I need to go back to, to Google here. You'll notice that the array.sort is underneath the system namespace. So that means that we need to go and include that namespace here. So we'll say using uh, system, like so, which means now we can go and access that array.sort method. All right, so now the array.sort method has a bunch of overrides. All right, but what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the delegate version. So uh, what I want to do is I want to pass in the array that we want to modify, and that's that selected array. Okay. And what I want to do now is compare the names of all the objects inside of this particular array. So to do that, we need to declare a delegate. 
All right, so I'm going to say delegate, and we're going to give this delegate uh, some arguments. Now, this delegate is kind of like a method, all right? It's mostly used for like event type stuff, so we can call this particular delegate. It's going to run its functionality and return us a particular value. And to do this, uh, we need to put in two arguments. So I want to pass in two game objects. So we're going to call this object A, and then we want another one called object B. All right, so these are the two objects that we're going to compare using this uh, delegate right here. All right, I also need to add the semicolon, I believe, right there. Nope, it's going to be right in here because there's no return, right? That, this is what this is telling me. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is I want to return a value. So we're going to say return. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, compare object A's name to object B's name. And what this sort is going to do is it's going to sort it by its name. Okay, so this is great because and it works really well for this particular instance because um, because I duplicated them, they have this numbering. So it's the sort method is going to pick that up and sort it appropriately. And then we're going to log it again, and it's going to show us the proper naming structure. All right, so we're going to say uh, return um, object A dot name dot compare to, and we're going to compare that to object B dot name, like so. All right, so uh, and then we just need the semicolon there. Perfect. So with that done, we can do the for loop again. So we'll just do for int i is equal to zero, and i is less than uh, selected dot length, and then we'll do i plus plus. All right, we'll debug dot log. Probably shouldn't have deleted it. Oh well. Okay, we'll do dot name. So, cool. So let's go back into Unity and uh, test this out. Make sure we didn't get any errors or anything like that. Okay, so let's clear the console and then hit rename selected objects. And you'll notice that we get cube, cube one, two, three. So our array is now sorted in the uh, correct order. So with that information, we can actually go and just finish this up. Now that we've got everything uh, nicely uh, organized in our array. So I really just want to show that because when you start working with objects, you know, with these particular arrays and lists for, for that matter, um, it's good to kind of organize your stuff. And that's uh, a nice, quick and easy way, well, relatively easy way. Once you understand delegates, it becomes easy. Uh, but it's a nice way to, you know, get that in one line of code. So what I want to do now is just declare a string called final uh, name. And I'm going to initialize that final name to an empty string like that. Or you can also do a string dot empty like so. Okay. So both those are completely valid. And uh, the first thing I want to do is take care of the prefix. Okay. So we can say if um, uh, wanted prefix dot length is greater than zero. All right. So we're just looking to see if the wanted prefix has characters in it actual letters and stuff like that because it's a string. So if it's greater than zero, that means we've got something typed in there. Then what we want to do is we want to say final name plus equals the wanted prefix. Now that plus equals just means we're adding on to whatever final name is currently set to. And currently, as we go through this particular method here, okay, um, that is the, the name that we want. I mean, that is the empty string. So then we're adding on the wanted prefix. Okay. And what I also want to do is just make sure we have that loop in there again. I don't know why I got rid of it. My apologies. So we'll say I uh, less than selected dot length. So we'll do it one more time. You know, practice is good. All right. There we go. So for each one of these objects, we're going to go through and name it appropriately. So we're going to say then for the next part, we want to say if um, wanted name. Yep. So wanted name uh, dot length is greater than zero. Then we want to say final name plus equals because we want to take whatever final name is currently equal to with the prefix on it and then add another piece of the string. So we say plus equals, and we're going to do an underscore between all of these. And then we'll say plus uh, wanted name like so. And then we'll do the same for the suffix. So we'll say if 
uh, wanted suffix dot length is greater than zero. Then what we want to do is final name plus equals another underscore, and we'll do wanted suffix. So we're adding that on. So then the last thing we want to do is we want to add on the the numbering. All right, so we'll, we'll do a check down here. We're going to say if um, add numbering is true, okay. Remember that's boolean. If that's true, then what we want to do is we want to say final name uh, plus equals uh, underscore and then plus the i, so the indexer, okay, dot to string, and we can give it a format so we can say zero zero zero, something like that. Okay. So let's save that and go back to Unity and give this a whirl. So now this should actually rename the objects and actually I lied. It won't actually rename the objects because we actually need to say that the selected object, the current one that we're on, that its current name is now equal to final name. And now it'll actually equal that name. So let's go back to Unity and try that out. Okay, so let's select all these guys and let's put in some value for all these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it, um, let's just say geo for the prefix. Uh, box, let's do something like that for the name, and then the suffix will be something like level, and then we'll add numbering. All right, so let's then hit the button here, and you can see now we have these guys all renamed nicely. So it's zero, zero, zero. If you want to actually, you know, start it at one, you would just say i plus one put that into parentheses like so and now let's say hit save there and go back to unity so now if we go it'll start at one not zero but you can leave it at zero too it's not like there's anything wrong with that there you go now we can go and change this so we can call this you know whatever maybe it's something like you know, ds for whatever that stands for for like your game you know name or something like that. So DS box, and we'll call this uh, Geo. We'll do that. There we go. DS box Geo one through nine. Cool. So that is how we make an object renamer or a mass renamer inside of Unity. Now you can go and extend this, you know, and add all the features that you want. You know, you just add on to this particular method right here. Okay. So thanks so much. And I look forward to showing you guys the next tool here soon. Talk to you later. Bye.